All right, that's a good question. Why? First of all, spirituality, enlightenment is for everybody. But just as in every sphere of life, like engineering or mathematics or what, you you can use the products of engineering. We are using it all the time, the microphone and the light and all of this. Uh, but you may not have a, much of an idea how it's working. But you need people who are specialists in this field. And everybody else can keep using it. Similarly, in spirituality also, you need specialists. It could be a, 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 a priest, a, a, an imam, a, a theologian, you know, church father. And among specialists also, there may be a, like super specialists who do only that and nothing else. So their quest is enlightenment, God realization, and, and nothing else. And there may be such people. So some religions have strong monastic traditions. Now these values are of use for everybody. Everybody does not have to be a monk. Everybody can and I think should be spiritual. Everybody can be spiritual and should be spiritual. Everybody can and should search for God. Um, not everybody can or should become a monk. It's not necessary. But the teachings, the monastic values are of great help in those who are on a spiritual path. Uh, what is the help there? I tell the story of the monkey. The one you know, used to come and steal vegetables from the farmer. And the farmer couldn't prevent it. So how to trap the mischievous monkey? So he devised a trap in which he put a vegetable inside a narrow-necked bottle. And the monkey came, crept down the tree and came and put its hand inside the bottle and grabbed the vegetable and was trying to pull it up. Of course, the vegetable got stuck because it's a narrow-necked bottle. It's just enough for its little hand to go in. And, of course, if you maneuver it in a particular way, the vegetable itself might come out also, but it's very difficult. And the farmer started running out of his uh, hut with a stick to beat the monkey. Now, now the monkey can escape. It can let go of the vegetable, pull out its hand and run away and climb the tree. But greed can't let go. And now the monkey is to be thrashed. The only way the monkey can escape the thrashing of samsara is for the monkey to become a monk. <laughs> that means to let go. To let go. <laughs> but if you don't let go, that's the problem. Swami Vivekananda says, Thine only is the hand that holds the rope that drags thee on. Let go thy hold, sannyasi bold. Say Om, Tat Sat Om. Can't blame God, can't blame Samsara. You can't even blame Samsara. Can't even blame the world. This is the way the world is designed. It can be a little worse and a little better. But it's going to be like this. It has been. In spite of avatars and uh, teachers and masters and prophets, the world still is like this. A little better maybe, that's all. You have to um, save yourself. So what are the values? The essential nature of, of being a monk is renunciation. Remember, not even without being a monk, being in the world, Bhagavad Gita is taught by Krishna who is a householder to Arjuna who is a householder. And after being taught the Gita, both remain householders. They don't become monks. In fact, in between the beginning, Arjuna was sort of suggesting that he could become a monk. Bhaiksha Charyam Charanti says, I can go and live on arms. Krishna tells him, no. If you want to be a successful worldly man, you have to be in the middle of this. If you want to be successful in spiritual life, you still have to be in the middle of this. So, uh, even if you are not that super specialized kind who wants only God, if you want that, well and good, we welcome you with open arms. But if you don't want that, if, or you want, many people cannot, because they are in such social circumstances, it's not practically possible to become a monk. But you can internally become monk-like. One has to become monk-like. You don't have to become literally... Even a monk has to be monk-like. If a monk is worldly, then no greater disaster than that. <laughs> the Gita says, Mithyachara sahuchyate. This is called hypocrisy. To sit quietly with withdrawing from the world of action and then think of the things one can get by, through the world of action. That's a kind of... Uh, that's hypocrisy. Instead of that, it's better to be engaged in action. But imbibe the values of monasticism internally. Be monk-like internally. What does that consist of? Sri Ramakrishna was very clear. Kam kanchon tag. The renunciation. Renunciation of what? Renunciation of acquisition of wealth and the pursuit of lust. 
He was pretty blunt about it. These are the two places where most people are, most everybody, anybody who feels trapped, bound in samsara, at the root are these two. That somehow, in some sensory way, sensual way, world will give me pleasure and um, that will give me fulfillment. That's one. The other one, by accumulating stuff in the world. It could be property, it could be um, wealth. It could start by just being what is called in the um, US especially a pack rat. You know, keep accumulating stuff. Why do people want to live in the midst of so much trash? It's, it's that desire to have. Where does it come from? It, oh, see, oh, even these desires, they are rooted in uh, your nature as Satchidananda. Sat, being. I don't know myself as being. The more stuff I have, I feel my being expanding. I have more. I am more. It could just be rubbish. You notice, sometimes unfortunate, mentally ill person, homeless, lugging along a huge uh, sack of stuff. So, is it that poor person's essential stuff? No, not, it's not essential stuff. It's random garbage picked up from here and there. Why? I am more with stuff. And that is really relevant to the United States. Very overrun with stuff. When it, your house is overrun, it goes into a garage. When there is no space for the car in the garage, it goes into a unique creation of the United States. Storage space. <laughs> People buy storage space. Big, big places where it's just, what's there? Just stuff. <laughs> for what? For nothing. Just for being there. It is very philosophical. Pure being, existence itself. <laughs> that is Kanchana. Sri Ramakrishna calls it gold. Yeah. Pursuit of gold means this. And um, then the other one is Kama, sensual pleasure. It is rooted in our nature as Ananda. Our nature is bliss. We don't like being unhappy. We don't like being miserable. We don't like unpleasant stuff. We like being pleasant and happy and pleasurable, everything nice. So that comes back from our real nature because it is nice. It is full of bliss, ananda, but misperceived, limited, and chasing it in the world out, going out with a begging bowl in hand for handouts from the world for happiness. What do you want? What are you here for? Like a beggar, give me happiness. A little bit of happiness from a person, from an activity, from a hobby, from, from this body. From sophisticated stuff like cultivating the arts and sciences and all from the mind. Now remember, this is a dangerous doctrine. I am not decrying Wall Street, uh, uh, the economy. Uh, I am not decrying Broadway, uh, neither the uh, boutique fashion shops nor the... Somebody said Manhattan is a foodies place. Food <laughs> or... The high music and art in, say, Juilliard and the Broadway theatre and all. No, 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 no. I'm making a much more subtle point. They do what they are designed to do. When we invest in them a huge load, a demand of make me perfectly happy, they are helpless. They are not designed to do that. Do we make such a demand? It sounds silly when you say, say it. For example, nobody ever should be unhappy, should be rude to me. Nobody ever, everybody should all the time be consistently, unremittingly nice and pleasant to me. You say, that's ridiculous, but that's what we feel. No, I don't feel that, Swami. But why do we get upset when one person at one time is a little rude to me? We remember that. Even when we, we forgive, it's alright, I forgive, I don't mind. But we still remember it. It hurts. Why? Deep inside is this unexamined belief, the world owes us happiness. So, renunciation of gold, renunciation of lust, that, that is fundamental renunciation. With that can come all kinds of other renunciation. Um, but it's a good principle. Even in the world as a householder, can I minimize, can I have this old adage of simple living and high thinking? Believe me, simple living and high thinking is the um, formula for happiness. We do the, just the opposite. High living and <laughs> low thinking. <laughs> Swami Vivekananda said, 
um, that he said this uh, this mixture of childlike simplicity and utter seriousness. If you look at Vivekananda, he's exactly like that. Some his American d d devotees and followers used to say he was like this great big boy, and it's a mixture of, it's a combination of childlike simplicity and utter seriousness. We do exactly the opposite. We are extremely complex and utterly shallow, and therefore unhappiness. We become complicated creatures and our lives are utterly shallow. Our thought lives, our intellectual lives, the way we lead our lives is shallow. And as people, the way we behave with each other and our, towards ourselves, very complex. That's why, you know, everybody has a therapist in New York or used to <laughs> a few decades ago. Just luckily going out of style. So these are the values. The central value of uh, being a monk is renunciation. H how much can you do without um, practically, how does that work? One is uh, have less. The Imitation of Christ is a very monastic book. It says, if you want peace, my child, always seek to have less rather than more. The exact opposite of what we do. Always seek to have less rather than more. One. If you want peace, my child, all, do these four things. One, always seek to have less rather than more. Always seek to be last rather than first. <laughs> In matters of taking credit, in matters of consumption, let others enjoy, let others get credit. And uh, in, in, I've seen, it's not a spiritual thing only. People who are respected, great people in any organization, could be a business organization, could be a scientific and academic organization, they follow these principles. Not consciously, they come to it automatically. And they are respected in that organization, a scientific organization, a commercial organization, a business empire. Simple life, um, putting others forward, not myself. Is he less successful because of that? Not at all. They're usually the top people. And somebody said, yeah, this is just because they're at the top, they had the luxury of doing these things. We have to climb to the top and shove people aside. We can't afford to be last rather than first. So always seek to be last rather than first. Then third one, in all matters of opinion, do the, the will of another rather than your own. Matters of opinion, not matters of value or of ethics. They stick to it. Matters of opinion, don't fight. Seek to do the will of others. You will find peace. And the last one, most difficult, each is in, these are in order of difficulty. First one, always seek to have less rather than more. Difficult but doable. Second one, always seek to be last rather than first. More subtle, more difficult. Third one, always seek to, in matters of opinion, always seek to do uh, the uh, will of others rather than your own, more difficult. And the last one is most difficult, but most powerful. In all matters, try to see and accept the will of God. Because it's the truth. Whatever happens here is literally the will of God. You may not like it. You will like it. Well, fine. Good for you. You may not like it. Can't be helped. But George Bernard Shaw, a lady, a little old lady came up to him and said, Grandly, you know, there's a sense of great achievement. Um, I, ha I accept the universe. And George Bernard Shaw is reputed to have replied, By God, madam, you better. <laughs> 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 so, uh, this is, these are the practices uh, for monasticism. Uh, yeah. One Swami was asked in the Himalayas, he asked the question to the people sitting around him. What is the characteristic of a monk? And somebody, people gave different answers. Somebody said, Brahma Jnana. The knowledge of Brahman. Enlightenment is the characteristic of a monk. Um, the Swami said, no. Enlightenment is possible for everybody. A householder also can be enlightened. Yeah. Then what's the characteristic of a monk? As our sadhu said, that the teacher. Tyag. Renunciation. Letting go, externally even letting go. Internally, of course. Internally, monk-like, everybody should be. For a spiritual seeker, you automatically will become monk-like. In fact, if you are a great writer, you become ascetic. You are a great scholar, you become ascetic. You are a great scientist, an artist, you become ascetic. With, except with regard to your art, everything else, you, it drops away. You can't, you can't achieve uh, greatness without that. You don't even have to deliberately do it. Your passion to, for that will make everything else drop away. 
So that's the best kind of renunciation. When your passion for something high lets everything else drop away, but if you calculatedly kick out this thing, kick out that thing, it can become artificial. All right. Then we can talk more about this. Um, I think we have run out of time. We should stop here.